This video has been brought to you by the Landscape Certified Contractors Association. Due to the membership support, we're able to bring content to each and every one of you. If you have a topic or a product you'd like us to review, or if you want to become a member, visit www.irrigatortech.com and hope to hear from you soon. Enjoy the video. Alright, so we'll start with, uh, with troubleshooting our irrigation system. Uh, Customer might say, "Hey, my sprinkler's not coming on. Nothing's working." You know. So first thing when we're talking uh, electrically with the timer, we're gonna start with the power supply and just work our way down so we get to the valves to see make sure everything's working properly. So we have in the books we'll go over later, step by step how to diagnose and troubleshoot the system. So first thing you want to do is come to the clock and look at the clocks. Is it on or off? You know. Most clocks will have a battery backup, like a nine volt. So the display might be on off on the battery supply, but it might not have power to the timer, 110. So this battery supply here, like on the Hunter or Rain Dial, Rain Birds, you can have a nine volt battery, go sit down on your couch and program this clock without having to be at the timer. So if you got a homeowner who just doesn't want to stand there, if they want to take this off, they have a good battery in there, they can go program in time, schedule, everything go back to the clock and plug it in. So if we have a battery here, the display will turn on. So just because the display is on, doesn't mean the timer has 110 volts to it. Some timers are set up, like the bigger i or ICC, the commercial clocks are set up to take 210 volts also. So 110 volts, um, as long as you're in a dry day, you might get shocked here, um, but not too dangerous, but any, any circumstance, if you're not sure, turn off the circuit breaker especially if you're not used to or comfortable with working with electric, electricity. So, you want to make sure you have a good ohmmeter. You can get cheap ones for like 10, 15 bucks, but they're not as reliable. The good quality ones, I mean, it's a good investment, especially considering to protect yourself from any shock hazards. So, this is a Armada. They make a lot of good, type, good stuff there. Um, Green Lee, Tempo. There's lots of companies that make stuff. So, when we're looking at our meter, um, we got, you guys know what these different symbols mean? So if we look at this one here, the V stands for volts, A is amps, um, ohms is resistance. So what we're going to do first is check our voltage at the timer. Um, we want to check to see if there's 110 volts coming into this one. So we turn our dial to voltage AC. So you see that one? this one's labeled voltage AC, what that has in, and the the, alter, the the alternating symbol means AC. The straight line with the dots underneath means direct current. So AC is like what we have in our home. DC current, direct current is like what you have in your car, a battery. So batteries are generally are, are DC 110 coming in or 220, 4, 4, 440. Um, so what we want to do is check our bolts checking the volts it doesn't matter which one goes in so if we were to come to this timer and the display was off there's no power let's check to see if the timer has volts power first so if we come over here volts you guys see that yeah 120 volt 122 volts coming out here so with that you guys know we have power coming to the timer so our time our power supply is good we can rule that out so our next step from there we want to check to see if the transformer is good our transformer in the timer steps are down because our, our irrigation systems run off of 24 volts. So what the transformer does is bringing that power down from 110 to 24 volts for our valves. So here we can see our display is good. We're going to go ahead and open up our faceplate here. And this one does has this one has a power supply in, internally in, internal transformer. So we'll work on that proce out there for now. If you guys can hand me that plug, we'll plug it in here and then we'll, we'll work on it out there. So this hunter here, if it just had a battery in there, you get the display like that. But the alternating, where it says, let me just move it. And it'll say real quick, if there's no power on this one, they don't all tell you. See, it says no AC. And then it'll register now and it'll come on. So if you go to it and say no AC, I got no power. It doesn't mean you don't have 110 volts coming to it. It could be the transformer's bad. So now that we know our, our power supply is good, we want to check the condition of our transformer. So we're still in voltage AC. Um, this timer should be 24 volts. 
at these two terminals where it says 24 volts AC. Okay. So if you take one of each of your uh, probes here, and touch it to that power supply, you're getting 27 volts. So that's good. Um, these will drain for out anywhere from 23, 28 volts. So you got something in that range, you're okay. But like you need to get the new más o menos 24 voltios para que te tenga corriente para el reloj. So, like on this Heiner timer, the power comes from the transformer to the to the motherboard through this ribbon cable. A lot of times on these ones, if you look at it, people take it, open it, pull it out. Make sure these aren't torn. If these are you're ripped, that could be the issue. So now we know our power supply is good to the trans to the power. We're good there. Our transformer goes. We got 110 volts. Let's see if this timer is putting out 24 volts to each station. So the first thing I like to do is down here. We got our common wire, C O M. It might say uh, ground or or uh, just have a C for common. Um, first thing I like to do is just check every leg, each station, to see if there's power when it's not supposed to be. Sometimes what happens is the motherboard will get a short in there and it'll be putting out 24 volts through every line when it's not supposed to. And then it's not enough power to turn anything on. If you have 24 cylinders trying to come on with 24 volts, it's like getting one volt to each one. So um, <coughs> if we go to our timer now, if we go to stage uh, manual, we do a single station, station six, turn it back to run. This one here has a sprinkler displayed on there. So station one, six minutes. So if I come back here now, so my common wire on one leg and go to station one, I should get 24 roughly volts. So now, okay, my timer's putting out power to the stations. So now we can move on. Okay, it might be a wiring issue out in the field. We you know our timer's working good. You want to do that for each station, six or each leg, because you can have the customer says, hey, you know what, just station five is not coming on. They could have blown a capacitor in here where just station five is not working. So check your voltage like that on each one. You guys want to try it? How to do that? So just each leg. So make sure you're on voltage AC when you're working on the time. So right now we got station one on. Press one on common and one on terminal one. You should get to see the power that we Now that we know that's good, we'll jump back onto this timer here and uh, we'll go to each valve. 